Well, as, as people know, I'm, I'm, I'm blind, so please be my eyes, Davy boy. OK. I once had to call 999 for a woman who couldn't speak English. Unfortunately, I couldn't see what the emergency was, and she couldn't describe <laughs> it. <laughs> please do. How long ago was this? This is going back quite some time, Caroline. Yeah. Let's say 20 years. Were you with her, or was this a stranger? No, this was a, a stranger. I mean, I, I she literally didn't speak any English. What, what noises was she making that led you to believe she, she <laughs> needed help? I was... <laughs> <laughs> I was walking along, minding my own business, when from out of a house, a woman came screaming and grabbed me and she dragged me through the house into the back room of the house and in the room there was a massive hole. To be honest with you, Chris, this just sounds like a, a Tinder date, to be real. <laughs> <laughs> I could see a little bit back then, just to give you some context. So oh, okay. my eyesight has deteriorated. So there was a, a massive hole and there was a step ladder on its side and I deduced that someone fell off the ladder and went through the hole. Had the fall created the hole, or was the hole already there? Well, then it'd be in the shape of the guy. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that Very right. good point. Yeah. That is right. I forgot about the, the rules Tom of Jerry. Tom and Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> so I phoned 999. And I explained to the person on the end that my eyesight was very, very poor and I wasn't able to tell what was at the bottom of the hole. And so the person asked on the phone whether I was with anybody that could see who was at the bottom of the hole. And I said, yeah, but you're not going to believe this. <laughs> <laughs> so, what, so what happened? I said, I, I'd imagine what you need is a fire engine and an ambulance. And also, I guess you didn't know the address. I told her, I don't know the address, but I can tell you to get here from the Waitrose. <laughs> she suggested that I take the foreign lady outside to the road sign and, and see if I could get her to spell it for me. And so through a series of um, enthusiastic mimes, I managed to gesture to her that I needed her to read me the letters on the road sign. Could you recreate the mime with David as the distressed woman? <laughs> Doing a distressed face. Oh, well, that, that helps. Yeah. Um... <laughs> <laughs> so I gestured down that I can't see the road sign. You have to read the road sign <laughs> and me. <laughs> so she said, B! And I'd say to the lady on the phone, B. And, eh! and I'd say, I think that was an E. Uh, ah! Go, you would accidentally stood on her toe. <laughs> we got through the road name and she was able to send the fire brigade and the ambulance to the right road and through some miracle of human biology, he was still alive after all the time it took me to, to get to the bottom of this problem. Caroline, what are you thinking? It's, it, it's not adding up for me. If someone comes shouting at you, you just, you just run past. Someone else will sort it out. <laughs> and how long have you been working with the Samaritans? <laughs> I think it's a, a fake story, this. On account of this, I can't think why the fire brigade would have any kind of kit that dealt with, uh, you know, descending into uh, an abyss. Uh, <laughs> I mean, they usually go from the ground up, you know, they've got you know, ladders. I do think, John, it's possible to take a ladder... <laughs> <laughs> well, and, to, and I don't know if you can get your head round this, it. but put it down... I can't see it. <laughs> How would that...? I can't see that. John, if you think that the fire brigade isn't equipped or indeed willing to deal with crises <laughs> that happen below ground level, <laughs> what emergency service is? Yeah. Is there a fourth one? Mountain rescue! Mountain rescue! Mountain right. rescue! Thank you! On the contrary, they're even more obsessed with upwardsness. No! <laughs> <laughs> We're the mountain rescue! We never go no, down! No, no, no! <laughs> There's no point going up there and going, we've saved you, but you can make your own way back down. <laughs> <laughs> so you're saying lie. Lie. They're both saying lie. I'll go with my teammates. You're going to go with the team. Yeah. They're saying it's a lie. Chris, truth or lie? I honestly had to get her to spell the road sign out to me, guys. <gasps> true. Oh. <laughs> it's true. Chris did call 999 for an emergency he couldn't see. I eat an apple a day in a very particular way. <laughs> <laughs> right, Lee's team. 
How long have you eaten an apple a day? Oh, uh, maybe, probably coming up to a year, nine, ten months, maybe. Ten months. So what is this particular way? <laughs> well, the usual way to eat an apple... They don't need to cover that, we know. Well, I mean, <laughs> Stephen's from Scotland, he mightn't be aware of eating fruit. <laughs> so... <laughs> but if you, you go in through the side and you eat around the core, yeah. and then you put the core in the bin... Yeah. You're not but... going to tell me you eat the core first, cos we're not going to believe you. <laughs> no, but I, I do eat the whole thing, cos I read from a very reputable news source, that 90% um, of the goodness is in the core. 90% of, of the goodness, goodness of an, an apple, apple all the benefits. is that little bit in the middle. In the middle, that's where all the goodness is, all the benefits. It does so much for that's your it. health. I've been chucking the core to the dog. The dog now is an <laughs> Olympic athlete. <laughs> <laughs> It. So, Chris, you eat the apple and where most of us then would be left with the core and would discard it, you you just carry on? No, no, no. The way that everyone eats an apple is, is fundamentally wrong. <laughs> so, oh. you don't go in through the side. You need to go in through the bum. Right? <laughs> wow. The opposite end to the yeah. stalk. So, if you go in through the bum, you don't notice the core because it's distributed equally amongst sweet, juicy apples. So you don't notice all of the goodness. What the <laughs> hell are you talking about? <laughs> this is great. I mean, if you yeah, eat this... an apple from the side and you're left with the core, all you've got is core. But if you eat it through the bum, up yeah. that way, you're getting a little bit of Why core. Why don't you eat it through the side but just keep chewing through the core? Because... Because then it's just core yeah, at the end. Yeah, because now then you've I'm got to go right through the middle. <laughs> no, you've got to go through the ride through the core before you get back to apple again. Whereas if you eat the bum end... Yeah. You're taking more apple each bite. Yeah. Who told you that the core is the best part of the apple? I don't want this to detract from the authenticity of the story in any way, but it was on Apple News. Who it was... <laughs> was the apple? apple News? Apple News, as in the tech company. Oh, I see. I genuinely thought you subscribed to an <laughs> Apple newspaper. Do you know what, Lee? As well, you would be amazed. Two years ago, I found out that I'd been eating a banana upside down my whole life. <laughs> What do you mean, upside down? Your instinct is you get the stalk and you snap the stalk. Oh, yes. Yeah. Now, and if you open it the other way, it but looks more... It's more just... pleasing, isn't it? Yeah, you hold yeah. onto the stalk and twist the nipple. And... <laughs> oh, my God! How can it's that not be not the right. wrong way? You're still eating the whole banana. Because if you bend the stem, you run the risk of mushing the end of the banana. So, what I'm saying is, Lee, if you eat an apple... From the bum. There's so many benefits, apparently. What's the benefit? Yeah. Everything except for curing blindness. <laughs> so, <laughs> so um, what are you going to say? Truth or lie? I'm not buying that. You're not buying it? No. You're no. buying it? No. no. I'm not having that. With your apple lie. nonsense. OK, Chris, truth or lie? I'm, I'm here to change the world, Rob. It's true. Yeah. <laughs> During lockdown, I bought a pogo stick to use as a home school teaching aid. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Lee's team. OK, so, Chris, have you got children? Um, just the one. And this was for, what, your homeschooling PE or something? Yes. When we did homeschooling, we split up the tasks. I, I was in charge of PE and maths, and my wife was in charge of reading and art, for obvious reasons. <laughs> <laughs> At what age is your child? During lockdown, she was six. And do you do anything else for PE or just pogo stick? <laughs> I'm quite a lazy guy, Lee. So I realised that when you're on a pogo stick and you're bouncing away, <laughs> what you're trying to do is see how many you can do. How many repetitions without touching the ground? Yeah, and maths is also... You have to also... touch the ground, Lee, to be fair. Otherwise, <laughs> <laughs> otherwise it's levitating, which we still haven't mastered. I appreciate you said it for comic effect, Rob, but you know exactly what I meant. <laughs> Well, what I try to do is I, 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 I realise that how many is also what, what you do often in maths. And I could consolidate all of my teaching efforts into one tidy little package of minimal effort. <laughs> so I invented pogo maths. OK. And um, you just shout out some sums and they have to bounce out the answers. But are they experienced in pogo sticking? Because it's quite hard. Well, I mean, it does help if you can use a pogo stick first, so you have to get over that hurdle, but that's, you know... You have to get over a hurdle as well. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate you said that for comic effect. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Robert. We have a pogo stick. Yeah. Well, it's, and... it's Chris's card. Make him do it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think the BBC's got enough money to cover the insurance on this. <laughs> don't worry, I've got this covered, Chris. Like the card, let David do it for you. <laughs> 
There is a pogo stick behind you, I believe. Oh, my gosh. There it is. <laughs> Don't do it there, and make sure you're two metres away from me. <laughs> <laughs> right. Down you go. Now, Chris... Hang on, let me have a practice go first. He's not doing it, Chris. This is going Chris. really well, Chris. <laughs> 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 Dead easy. Um, are you ready? Yes. What is 8 minus 5? OK. The problem I've got now is if I bounce and fall off after, say, 2, you don't know if I'm bad at pogo or bad at maths. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. 1, 2, 3. Give it yeah. Well, this is, this, is, this is good, because you've got to get them all right if you want to do dinner tonight. Um, <laughs> I've got one. So, let's just see how many I can do. Yeah, let's see how many you can do. I'll just try and jump point. up onto that. Oh, that? No. Oh, no. Don't do it, Lee. Don't do it! One, oh, no, two, do three, four, <laughs> five, <laughs> six, <laughs> seven! Oh. <laughs> I've got no idea what's going on. So, having experienced it... Yes. ..do you think he's telling the truth? What do we think? I didn't know there still did pogo sticks. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yes. I imagine how hard you could hit the ball with a spring-mounted snooker cue. I mean, <laughs> that's... <laughs> that's a good point. Yeah. So, what are you thinking about this story? The more I think about it, the more I think it wouldn't work, because the white ball's going to spin back. No, no, <laughs> not, no. no. <laughs> We're talking now about the maths and the pogo. Right. Yeah. Gotcha. Do you reckon it's true? I think it's true that Chris is, is lazy. I'm not um, really blind, it just gets me out of doing things. <laughs> <laughs> I, listen, tell me about it, mate. I do it all the time myself. <laughs> How do you think I park so close to Sainsbury's? <laughs> um... <laughs> I think he's lying. You think he's lying? I think he's lying as you well. You think mate, he's yeah. lying? We'll, we'll go with my team and say he's lying. OK, saying it's a lie. So, Chris, maths on the pogo stick. Was it true or was it a lie? Pogo maths copyright, Chris McCausland, 2020. <laughs> true. Oh! oh. oh. <laughs> yes, it's true. Chris did use a pogo stick to teach his daughter maths. OK, they offered me this in Braille, but as blind people go, I'm pretty rubbish and I can't read any of that nonsense. So, <laughs> <laughs> Lee, will you please do me the honours and read what is on that card? I certainly will. For a whole month, I thought my neighbour was ignoring me and he thought I was ignoring him until he found out I was blind and I found out he was deaf. <laughs> <laughs> so, he's your next door neighbour, is that right? Um, <clears throat> do you need me to read it again? Yeah. <laughs> he's my neighbour, David. Right. Um, there's three flats. I live in the middle, and he lives on the bottom. And who lives upstairs? A policeman. And, <laughs> and, and he a... can't speak. <laughs> <laughs> So, you thought he was being standoffish? I thought he was being the rudest person that I've ever met. <laughs> I was there, for example, on the day that he moved in, and I said hello to him, and he completely ignored me. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he didn't. Maybe he went... Well, he... I don't know what you're doing, <laughs> and... <that's... laughs> you have perfectly highlighted <laughs> exactly what probably happened. So, he, he's deaf... Yes. ..but he can see? Yeah, I, otherwise he'd be in real trouble, really. <laughs> Just because wouldn't he see you saying hello to him? Over the course of a month, there were separate incidents where we each thought the other was being rude. So... The first time that he was moving in, he was carrying boxes into the house and I was halfway up the stairs. I shouted hello to him and he never said anything back to me. And I thought, that's a bit rude. And isn't you it? knew he was there just through hearing. You heard the, the sound in, and you yeah, knew, oh, I mean, that'll be the new bloke arriving. Contrary to popular belief, deaf people do make a noise. <laughs> 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 so. <laughs> So, but, but other occasions, <laughs> I would be outside, like, doing something with the car. I, like, packing the car, unpacking the car, maybe doing Not some... Not driving the car. 
<laughs> no, we, me, me, me wife has to do that for okay. entirely legal reasons, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> I reckon I could probably do the motorways if they had them things off the bowling alley down the side. <laughs> <laughs> A number of times, he'd come back to the flat and he'd, like, waved and smiled at me and I'd not known he was there and completely blanked him. And then I'd heard him walk past and I'd <laughs> shouted hello to him. <laughs> but I was talking to his back then and he never answered me. And this went on for quite, quite a while, really. How did it resolve itself? Yeah. Did the policeman well, intervene? <laughs> and sort I out? called the police and he came down. Yeah. <laughs> and then I had a hunch he must be deaf. I, I guessed that that was the only possible plausible option. <laughs> I'm exactly like that <laughs> with my audiences when they're not laughing. <laughs> <laughs> I actually bumped into his mum, um, who was visiting, and I said, like, he's deaf, isn't he? And she said, yeah. That's a, that's a bold opening gambit. <laughs> <laughs> we have each other's mobile numbers now, and um, so we're able Hang to Hang on, send... let me think about this for a second. <laughs> How does he answer the phone? We, we, we have text messages, Lee. Right, you know the next question, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> so... <laughs> My phone but... talks, so it reads everything out. And if, I, 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 I mean, just to give you an insight, even the emojis, if you use an emoji, it tells you what the emoji is. And the smiley face, the one that the main smiley yeah. face, specifically for blind people, that one is called smiling face with normal eyes. <laughs> yeah. so... I'm expected to use the smiling face with sunglasses, but um, <laughs> it turns out as well, which took me by surprise, that he's Australian, which you associated with the accent, don't you? But like, he's just Australian in his head. <laughs> I mean, I know that's... Okay, let's let's. I mean, this is this is becoming odd. <laughs> Offensive, they don't have to put it on the subtitles. <laughs> John, what are, you, what are you thinking? Well, I'm thinking, I don't know, I don't believe it. I don't you believe think it. he made that up? <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, Gabby? There's lots about it that I don't think is true. You say, I believe it. I believe it. But I, you I'm, believe I'm it, not, they don't. No, I'm not. I'm, I'm not going to overrule my team, though. No, 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 no you haven't got the strength of character. I do. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't feel strong enough about, about it to overrule No, I mean, it, it is plausible, it is plausible. OK, <clears throat> we're going to say true. Right, they're saying it's true. Chris, truth or lie? It is 100% true. <laughs> Yes, it's true. Chris and his neighbour really did think they were ignoring each other.